Hi everyone, I'm Gina and this video is going to go over how to calculate the PI of a tripeptide. The tripeptide that we're looking at today involves cysteine, glutamate, and alanine, and the CEA refers to the one-letter abbreviations of the amino acid. Before we get started, I want to show you an acronym that helps you quickly identify which amino acids have ionizable side chains. When I say ionizable side chain, I mean that the amino acid has an R group that can either gain or lose a proton to get a charge. So the acronym is dry heck. And this refers to the one letter abbreviations of the amino acids. So the first thing I like to do is go through my peptide chain and identify which amino acids have ionizable R groups. So first I notice that C is in dry heck, so it has an ionizable side chain. Next, I notice E is in dry heck, so it has an ionizable side chain. But then I notice that A is not in dry heck, meaning it doesn't have an ionizable side chain. When an amino acid doesn't have an ionizable R group or side chain, its structure does not contribute to the overall calculation of PI. And we'll see that in a little bit. Next, I write out the whole tripeptide fully protonated. The easiest way to do this is to repeat the pattern NCC, NCC for each amino acid. So I start off with the alpha amino group, and I just continue writing NCC, 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 one for each of my amino acids. I wrote out the alpha amino and alpha carboxyl group fully protonated because that's what we want. Then I go through and fill in the top and that also has a pattern. So the alpha carbon always gets a hydrogen, the next carbon gets a carboxyl, and the nitrogen gets a hydrogen, and so on and so forth. Until you run out of space. Then we write out the side chains in order of how it was given to us in the problem. So the first side chain is cysteine, the next side chain is glutamate, and the last one is alanine. Make sure that you draw each of the side chains fully protonated. So this whole tripeptide should have every proton it possibly can. The next thing I like to do is write out all the PKAs that I'll be dealing with. So I like to put my PKAs in a little list. So the first one is the alpha amino group. Next is the alpha carboxyl. Then we look at the amino acids with ionizable side chains, the first one being cysteine. And then we have glutamate. Now I like to calculate the overall charge of the whole tripeptide. So this is the only charge that I see so far, so this has an overall charge of plus one. Next, look at this pKa list and find the lowest number. In this case, it's going to be 2.19. When we're dealing with pI, we want to pretend that we're starting at zero on the pH scale, and we're going all the way up to 14, passing each pKa and deprotonating at each pKa as we go up the scale. So you always want to start off at the lower end of the scale. So this 2.19 means that our alpha carboxyl is getting deprotonated first, this hydrogen. So our next structure is going to be the same without that pink hydrogen. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to rewrite the structure here, deprotonated. I went ahead and copied the pKa list because we're going to need it again. Now we calculate the overall charge of the molecule again. In this case, we have a plus charge here and a minus charge here. They cancel out and the overall charge of this molecule is zero. Because we already deprotonated, we will not use the alpha carboxyl pKa again. And now we look on our list for the next lowest one, which is glutamate. So once we pass the pH of 4.07, the glutamate side chain will get deprotonated right there. So I'm going to scroll down again and rewrite the tripeptide now with the glutamate deprotonated. And now we calculate the overall charge. So we have a plus one here, a minus one here, so we're at zero, and then we have an extra minus charge. So the overall charge is minus one. But when we're dealing with PI, we only care about the two pKa's on either side of the tripeptide that has the overall charge of zero. So you can choose to keep going and deprotonating, but this is all you need to calculate the PI. So now all you do is take the average of the two pKa's and you get 3.13. This is the PI or the pH at which the tripeptide's overall charge is equal to zero. 